What the fuck is up? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. And today we are back with another edition of Thursday Night Football prize picks, prop bets. We're doing the the five flex play, trying to go five for five, trying to 10x our money. We did it week three. We were close in week one and week two. Last week, we went one for five. Not a good showing. It all came crashing down. And now it's back to reality. And you might expect, you know, I, I'd come into this week with my tail between my legs, but that's not the case. Because this week, we're back at it. We're going to 10x. We're going to hit all of them. Let's get to it. <laughs> Having said that, I don't particularly like this game for uh, this particular prop bet situation. This is this is a, a rough week of Thursday Night Football. For a lot of these matchups, you can kind of go back and see like, okay, throughout his career, Austin Eckler, when playing at least 50% of the snaps, you know, scores, you know, has over 35 receiving yards 70% of the time. Like, whatever. You can go back in his career, given that his, his situation has been similar for a couple years now. That's not the case with either of these teams. The Colts have a new quarterback. Matt Ryan. The Broncos have a new quarterback in Russell Wilson. You can't go back multiple years and act like these situations are equivalent. So we have like four weeks of data to work with. There's growing pains with each of these teams. We don't even know if Jonathan Taylor is going to play this week, at least as of this recording, which is on Tuesday. So we don't we don't know what this Colts offense is going to look like. The Broncos offense is still figuring itself out. The unders in this game, I think, would be really attractive if the lines for some of the auxiliary players were not so damn low. Like Ashton Doolin's line right now, 13 and a half receiving yards. Paris Campbell, 20 and a half receiving yards. Kylan Granson, some dude I've never heard of on the Colts, 14 and a half receiving yards. Matt Ryan, 1.5 rushing yards. I like to take the unders on shitty players and the overs on good players, but the shitty players in this game have ridiculously low unders that could all be wiped out by one play, which makes it scary. But for the lines I actually like, the first one is Russell Wilson's passing yards line, which is at 225.5. I like the over. Russell Wilson is averaging 245 passing yards per game this season. He hit this over in two out of his four games, but he had 219 yards in one of the games in which he missed this over. And opposing quarterbacks have hit this number in three out of four games so far this season against the Colts. So I like Russell Wilson to go over 225.5 passing yards on Thursday Night Football. The next line I like is Russell Wilson's wide receiver one, Cortland Sutton. His receiving yards line is 73.5. I like the over again. He's averaging 85.8 receiving yards per game this season, so well over this line. And the only game in which he didn't hit this over, he had 52 yards. It's not like he had a total dud. He's been a solid producer all season. And opposing wide receiver ones have averaged 69.8 receiving yards per game against the Colts. That would hit this over. And opposing wide receiver ones have averaged 69.8 receiving yards per game against the Colts this season and have hit this over in three out of four games. I like Sutton to go over 63.5 receiving yards. And the last line here that I, I really just like is Matt Ryan over 0.5 picks. I like Matt Ryan to throw a pick. He's got five picks so far this season. The He only has one game without throwing a pick, and he's averaging 1.3 picks per game. It would be surprising if he didn't throw a pick tonight. So I like Matt Ryan uh, to throw at least one pick. And that is kind of the end of the lines here that I'm like, legitimately a fan of. After that, we've got like Michael Pittman, 66 and a half receiving yards. I kind of like the over there, just given like how he's been producing this season. He's averaging 74.7 receiving yards per game. He missed week two with an injury, but he went over this line in two out of the other three games that he's played so far. And opposing wide receiver ones have averaged 67 yards per game against Denver. But that includes guys like Devontae Adams last week, who went for like 100 yards, but they've got Pat Sertan as their number one corner. He's pretty good. I don't know if I trust Michael Pittman paired with Matt Ryan to go over this line matched up against Patrick Sertan, who follows, you know, opposing wide receivers around the field at a slightly higher rate than average. I also sort of like Mo Ali Cox to go over 17 and a half receiving yards, just because I think Mo Ali Cox is a decent player. He had a big game last week. I think Matt Ryan knows that he can trust Mo Ali Cox. And this receiving line is only 17 and a half yards. That's not very much. Ali Cox is averaging 32.3 receiving yards per game this season. Like I said, he had 85 last week. And opposing tight ends have hit this line 
in three out of four games against Denver so far this season, but that includes games in which they held George Kittle to 28 yards. He hit this over, but they held George Kittle to 28 yards. Same thing with Darren Waller. He only had 24 yards. And so while opposing tight ends are hitting this number, those are like really damn good tight ends who are underperforming what we would, pers- you know, what we would expect from guys of their caliber. It's hard to trust Mo Ali Cox having a productive day, even with such a low number. All that being said, the last two bets on this five by five that I that I'm hitting are Paris Campbell, 20 and a half receiving yards. I kind of like the over. He's averaging 22.5 per game, has hit this over in two out of his four games. So, you know, kind of a toss up. But the big thing here is that he's playing a lot. 77%, 86%, 82%, and 67% snap shares in his four games this season. Compared to the other receivers on the team, like we got Michael Pittman, who's the clear number one, and then Paris Campbell, and and behind them, it's like Alec Pierce playing 45% of the snaps each week, and Ashton Doolin down in like the 25-30% snap range. Paris Campbell's the only other guy on this team, other than Michael Pittman at wideout, who's playing a majority of the snaps. 20.5 receiving yards is not a very high line. I think he can do it. And the last line I like is Brandon McManus to make more than one field goal. His his line is 1.5 right now. I like the over. I don't want to bet on these field goal lines, but I kind of like this McManus one. He's averaging two per game. He made three field goals in both week one and week two. He attempted two field goals in week three, only got to kick one last week, but he's averaging 2.5 field goal attempts per game. He's a good kicker. They're in Denver with the altitude. That, that's a good kicking environment. And because I don't like a lot of the other lines, my fifth you know, kind of bet that I like here is Brandon McManus. Other than that, usually I have some, uh, some honorable mentions. I don't really have any go-tos this week. I haven't been very good on them anyway, but those, those lines for the other guys with the Colts, like Ashton Doolin, uh, receiving yards, Kyle Granson receiving yards, Matt Ryan rushing yards. I like the unders on those. Some of them will probably hit the overs, but like shitty players, I like to take the unders on those. So that's what I'm going with this week. (laughs) 